This location in the Val d'Orcia is just beautiful. A location that you might also recognise from a Hollywood blockbuster. Tuscany is truly a beautiful region of Italy and I guess the jewel in that crown is here in Florence. Now having said that there are some beautiful gems within this crown too. This episode is all about showcasing those gems. Let's now have a look at some of these wonderful alternative places that you can visit within the region of Tuscany. I hope you enjoy this episode. Please, thumbs up, subscribe, bell notifications on. Now, let's start with Luca. It's only about 80 to 90 kilometers away from Florence. An easy train trip. I did a one day trip here from the Santa Maria Novella train station. Return ticket, 20 euro. So sit back, get some popcorn and enjoy my experiences in Luca. Luca, what a great medieval town to visit. Yeah. The distinguishing fact about this defensive wall is that above us right now, we have a walking, running, cycling track, car free. So the Luca train station is just outside the wall at one of the main um, entrances. And there's bike hire places everywhere. Here we come into the Piazza Amphitheatro and this has got origins back to the second century AD. Right, so I'm sitting here in the Amphitheatro in Luca, enjoying a cappuccino and just soaking up the atmosphere. Hey, do you feel like a climb? I do. Spectacular, isn't it? That's 700 years old, I think. The Guinigi Tower. We were up there earlier today, weren't we? That was fantastic over there. Look at the crowds on the top of this clock tower. <laughs> but charming, isn't it? And um, you get that authentic feel too. 200 towers in Luca back in the day, and the nobility lived in the towers. The bigger and taller the tower, the more important you were. The old street performers, you gotta love it, don't you? And look at this, this is just behind me there. It's, it's beauty in all directions in Luca. Now Pisa, it's actually on the same train line as Luca. So it's quite feasible, it's quite feasible that you could visit both Luca and Pisa in the same day. The Leaning Tower, it's not really a hidden gem, is it? It's iconic, I'm sure you'll agree. Worth visiting for sure. Have a look at this. So I'm coming up to the Piazza dei Miracoli, the Square of Miracles where of course the Learning Tower of Pisa is. And here we go, our first glimpse, framed by the archway. <laughs> Saturday morning, all the tour groups have arrived. And on our day trip from Florence, we've got about an hour to explore. Plenty of time. Lots and lots of people, of course, because this is one of the iconic attractions globally, isn't it? the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Construction began in 1193 and more or less from day one it started to lean. An engineering issue. Presently it's at about just under 5% lean. You know what, in 1987 it was World Heritage listed UNESCO but in 1990 closed to the public for fear of it collapsing. But a year or two later they I guess underpinned, underpinned the foundations, secured the lean, 
and it's been pretty good since but it's a fantastic attraction so look if you're in Italy yes it's a must I'm fortunate to have visited Pisa before what I like doing is um, watching people doing the classic holding up of the tower now I've contributed to that too I might just get some sneaky shots of people holding it up it's, it's quite good to watch okay getting that classic photo holding up the tower everyone's doing their bit to hold up the tower oh there's someone kissing the tower over there I like that so what do you think learning tower of Pisa worth a visit look I think so that so if your time is limited with your visit to Tuscany and Florence yeah a one day bus tour out into Tuscany certainly certainly is recommended uh, Monte Regione about 60 kilometers south of Florence close to Siena it's probably one of those medieval hilltop fortified towns that you will only visit if you're here in Tuscany for an extended period of time it is small and you can see it within two or three hours I had the luxury of staying at Monte Regione overnight, the hotel within the fortified town. So after the day trippers have left, and with a population of over 60, I felt like king of the castle. It was great. Well, good morning, and we're on the Strada Provinciale 222. It leaves Florence and winds its way throughout southern Tuscany. And look at this, Monte Regione, the hilltop fortress. And guess what? That's where I'm staying tonight. I think I prefer the first. Yeah. That first red. Yeah. Sangiovese. Mm, mm, yes. I think so. Yeah. You can eat. Uh, okay, so there you go. That was um, 12 euro. That bottle. 100% Sangiovese grape. Uh, lovely chap too. He does a bit of business in the the US as well. Um, okay, getting back to. Monteregioni, look at the look at the old walls and doorways and and just to my right you've got the the little village green. This uh, this our hotel just through there. So as you can see it's really just two blocks, two blocks of medieval buildings, very authentic, that's the key to it. So authentic, really original, it's like it's like stepping back into time. And we're coming up to the the main piazza again, off oh, Flitzer, there we go, off me, and this is what you want to see, the Santa Maria Santa Church in front of me there, a few little restaurants in this piazza, just so rustic and authentic isn't it, and see the, um, the eastern gate, that's where we drove through, we can see that car going there now, and then we've got the town well, Okay, so I've just about walked around the town, and if we turn right here, this will lead us back into the Piazza di Roma with the church in front of us. Look great for photography. That's a lovely scene, isn't it? Look at that. So I'm standing up on the wall looking to the Piazza, Piazza di Roma, built in the early 13th century. So this was really built to protect Siena from a possible attack coming from Florence. And we can see here the wall of Monte Regione going all the way around. It's truly encircled. If your time is limited, and let's say you're tossing up between San Gimignano, for instance, and here, I would go for San Gimignano. It's got a bit more to offer, I think. It's 8.30 p.m. What a contrast, eh? Everyone's gone home. Did you know? Total population only 60. Next up is Pienza in the Val d'Orcia. I love that place down there. A bit further south, about 50k from Siena, close to Montepulciano by the way. It's a great area for wine but around Pienza you find those beautiful Tuscan scenes, those world famous scenes with the cypress trees. So do yourself a favour and visit Pienza. You won't regret that. The Chapel of the Madonna di Vitaletta. It's located on the hills of the Val di Orcia, on the road between San Quirico and Pienza. Let's go in and have a look 
I've heard some pretty good things about Pienza. Oh, but this is nice too, isn't it? First impressions. Very pretty. Oh, there's a lookout. It's drawing us in, isn't it? And I always say, people living in those villas out there wonder what their story is. Let's walk this way. Grazie. Beautiful. I'll tell you what, some lovely shops too. Really nice. Okay, so we're just coming up to the Piazza Pio. Yeah, so this pathway goes all the way along as a uh, viewing platform overlooking the valley. Pianza Sunset. Looking over the Val di Occia. Gotta love it. Beautiful morning here down in Tuscany. And these cypress trees just draw you in. So we're on the road just out of San Quirico, which is not far from Pienza. There's a little parking bay that you can stop at safely and just have a quick look. And what about the flowers out too? I was just saying to my wife, um, this time of year, you know, April, May, not too hot, not quite as crowded. Eerie light filters around him as he stands in what is, in this case in the film, quite literally paradise. This scene was filmed just below the walls of Pienza in the UNESCO World Heritage listed Val di Orcia. Make sure to explore this stunning area of Tuscany during your travels in Italy. By the way, when we visited Pienza, we stayed two kilometers from the town itself at a Agri Turismo, a farm stay. So obviously we had uh, access to a car, which you need. Now, Multipulcioni is just 15 kilometers from Pienza. So we spent an afternoon sampling some wine and exploring that hilltop medieval town that has sensational views overlooking Tuscany. Multipulciano, another hilltop town in southern Tuscany. A town responsible for the nobly red wine. I like the sound of that. Let's go in and have a look. Look at the cellar down the back. So my first impressions as I walk along the street here, a lot of wine shops. Hey, we bought six bottles, six bottles for 75 euro. So you do the math. I've actually done it for you. 12.50 each a bottle. It's euro. Depending where you're from, you can do your conversions. It's pretty good, isn't it? That's pretty good. Right, so we've been climbing up for quite some time. What do you think, everyone? So this is a large piazza at Multi Pucciano and quite aptly named Piazza Garandi. And with a bit of luck, we're going to be rewarded with some lovely views. A quick reflection on the last few episodes. Pisa, who hasn't heard of the Leaning Tower? Siena, Tuscany's second city. Much to offer and so easy to see in a day. San Gimignano, don't miss it. Monteregioni, a tiny medieval village, fortified. So, step back in time. Pienza, stunning and located in the heart of the most picturesque part of Italy, the Val di Orcia. And here we are at Multi Pulciano, wines and a beautiful town. Very close to Pienza too. It's charming. Right, so I just had a spritz, had to um, rehydrate. Very important. I don't want to get dehydrated. Now, those of you who watch, those of you who have watched the Twilight series, 
you might recognise some of the landmarks here. The sequel, New Moon, apparently was filmed here. Okay, and over at Pienza, um, just below the town there at Pienza, uh, that final scene, Gladiator, filmed there too. Actually, it's quite a few Hollywood movies been filmed in this part of Tuscany, and you know, it's pretty obvious why, and it's just beautiful around here. Hey, we're on our way home back to Florence. We've had two fantastic days down in southern Tuscany. Ah, uh, the landscapes, history, food and wine, the Renaissance. Do yourself a favour, come to Tuscany. Now let's check out Siena, steeped in history and a very strong rival with Florence over the centuries. Most famous, I guess, for the Paleo race that's been going on for centuries. Now, it's run twice a year, July and August. And if you can get yourself into Siena to coincide with the Paleo race, that would be an experience for sure. Let's check out Siena. And Siena's a lovely place. It's about 75 uh, kilometers south of Florence. So I'm gonna show you here, but also down in the big piazza, Piazza del Compo, where they have the Paleo race, the horse race. Now, an entry ticket to the Siena Cathedral will cost you about 950 euro. Best to have this ticket included if you're on a tour. It'll just save you some time. Stained glass round window. That was made in 1288. The pulpit is just amazing, isn't it? That was sculptured out of marble. But now the Piccolomini Library. That's an absolute treasure. So the library was essentially built to honour Pope Pius II. So ahead of me now, just down this hill, is the Piazza Compo, where they run the Paolo race, horse race, Mangia Tower, just there. So in front of me, I'm just looking at the Piazza Compo, where they have the horse race. So I'm going to flip the camera around and just explain what this race is all about. So here we are here, and just have a look. Can you imagine 10 horses running around this grey paved track. Obviously it's covered in clay. So 10 horses, 10 horses representing 10 districts. And the horses are pushed around for three laps. It's about 90 seconds. The jockeys, no saddles, no saddles, are just hanging on for dear life, I believe. Now, this race occurs twice each year on the 2nd of July and the 16th of August. And this piazza is packed full of people, all patriotic participants of their local districts. How exciting that race would be. Hey, did you know the horses are blessed in the church the day before the race? This is, this is huge, this event in Siena. This is massive. And it's been going on since the seventh century. Now, Siena and San Gimignano are typically combined in day trips, bus tours that leave from Florence. San Gimignano can be reached by car, but I guess the preferred arrival mode is via bus, a day trip. It does include Siena, sometimes Pisa. So I've got a little bit of wine tasting to do first, and a little bit of food too, Tuscan delights, and uh, then we've got an hour or so over in San Gimignano. I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. Hey. Okay, so we're going to go in, try some wine, and a little bite to eat. What about the views? What about the wine? Salute. Grazie mille. So a little bit about San Gimignano, medieval hilltop, fortified town, best known for its production of saffron and, and white wine, World Heritage UNESCO, San Gimignano. So ahead you can see two of 14 towers that still remain in San Gimignano. During medieval times, there are as many as 72. Coming up to the main piazza now, through the archway here. Have a look at this piazza, just beautiful. 
just the well in the centre. It's a real meeting point, that one in San Gimignano. I just love the contrasting stones. So I'm heading up this way because it's a great lookout that a lot of people don't go to. Isn't this a lovely little piazza? Yeah, that's a great vista, isn't it? As I pan upwards to get those towers. That's fantastic. So the one day Tuscan trip today, Pisa, a winery, sampling, and some food, San Gimignano and Siena, 70 euro. And a great little lookout tower just up here. See that? Now that's worth a visit. You're going to get some lovely views over Tuscany. And this is a classic view through the doorway. The doorway frames the Tuscan countryside. Let's go. So we've got the fortified walls high up on the hill of San Gimignano. What a spot. What a spot to live. But isn't that lovely? Just experiencing this. I encourage you to come to San Gimignano. So now, what did you think of San Gimignano? I must admit, I love that place. I've been there a few times now because every time uh, people visit, they want to go to San Gimignano. I, I volunteer. Yeah, 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 okay. I'll go with you. It's great. So, this episode comes to a conclusion. It's a bit like a greatest hits of places to visit in Tuscany. I've really enjoyed putting this together. And as a reminder to you in the discussion below, I'll include the links to the standalone episodes for all of these places, because this episode is really just giving you a, a summary. I really do appreciate, by the way, uh, the feedback I receive, the questions, and importantly, the, the positive comments. It's great. It really gives me confidence to know what I'm producing is being enjoyed. Now, as always, thumbs up, subscribe, bell notifications on. I'll see you next episode down in southern Italy at Puglia. I'm going on the weekend. I'm really looking forward to sharing my experiences of Puglia with you next week. So that's it for now. Ciao and see you soon.